And so the, the audio and the video will be published on all the mighty networks and websites and all of those, what Nuno, Ben and Eva have created um, to disseminate all these treasures. So I would ask a couple of things that everybody turn off your microphone. So then we can, the recording can be just, people can really hear uh, what's being said and turn on your video because we'll be doing a lot of breakout rooms and it would involve connection and vulnerability. And when you do that, it's just seeing people would be better. And I just see there's a couple people, I think you have more than one person on your screen. So in the breakout room, um, if you can put the different name of the people on your screen, if you have more than one, when I create the breakout room, I can put you alone and then you will do the exercise with the person who you're sitting with. And then the other people, I will put you in pairs or groups of three. Yeah, this is gonna be a couple hours. We'll try to end on time uh, in two hours. And with Clinton, we might just stick around a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes uh, afterwards, if there's questions or comments or just to wrap up the space. Because if we were in a physical space, there would be this buffer zone of we all coming and sort of moving and greeting each other. And then there would be this time out where we are leaving and we can have this exhaling after uh, a two hour session. So we'll just give space for that here online. Okay, I think that's it for the logistics. Thank you. Could you introduce yourself first? Yes. Okay, I, my name is Anne Chloe Destromo. Let, just give me a second. I'm gonna change the name here so we can have it. Anne Chloe, Anne Clinton. Yeah, my name is Anne Chloe Destromo and I'm a possibility management trainer and coach and game world alchemist, um, which means that I, some of you might have been in the call just before, which was about facilitating alchemy and change and transformation in a next culture game world. So this is part of my job of my archetypal vineyard, which would include um, communication and upgrading the communication paradigm. I'd like Vera to say, identify herself. Vera, <clears throat> would you identify yourself as the sorceress in our team? Hi, my name is Vera, Vera Franco, and I am the sorceress behind the portals to a lot more distinctions and experiments. And I am also a possibility management trainer and abundance midwife. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanna say there's this, so some of you have been in our, in our sessions before, some of you know us from before, and Clinton and I and Vera and Yuli, who's maybe on this call also, we have, there's a team called General Mimetics building this start over dot XYZ, a massively online and offline um, multiplayer personal transformation and thoughtware upgrade game, which we're putting as much as the treasure that we discover and that possibility management has discovered in the past 45 years. We're trying to put everything online for free for you to use in your life, in your relationship, in your communities, in, and just take it, all of it is copy lefted. It cannot be copyrighted. So take it, steal it, use it, make your own talks and workshops, do the exercise. It's, it's, it's part of the creative commons. So it's for all edge workers uh, out there. So include everything we do here <clears throat> now is just uh, use it also. And Please, please, this is the kind of treasure that grows the more you give it away. And so, the, really, the, I think the thing I wake up and go to sleep each night with is kind of this puzzle of how to give the treasure away better or more, more effectively. So I'm, I very appreciate, very much appreciate this platform. Um, that's been created and every single one of you who's participated so intensely in these last few weeks and that you're here right now with us 
My name is Clinton Callahan. I am I'm a medic engineer and a game world builder. And I, uh, as a medic engineer, I invented the term possibility management and with the teams have been developing all of all the possibility management is for the last since 1975 for a long time so i think that in my opinion the conversation we're going to have tonight is one of the most important conversations one can have and i'm i if i had my wish uh every single one of you would get this at a cellular level to the degree that once you find your way into this new conversation paradigm that we're clarifying here tonight together, that once you find your way there, you never have to leave. And I, I, I think that's one of the greatest joys in my life is to have, to have the distinctions and the, the procedures and the tools and the skills that's developed over the years to, to, to do that. In the last, I don't know, seven years maybe, I've, I've refused to leave the context of a shifted paradigm conversation. And um, I, 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 like it's the, one of the greatest gifts that I could possibly imagine. Nobody in school, not even spiritual teachers, like really all over the, Everything I've encountered before now, the, there's no degree involved in it. You don't have to, you know, there's no certification problem. It's the pirate paradigm. Either you can do this or you can't do this. And once you can do it, you never have to stop doing it. And, um, and so I, I, what the result of this shifted conversation paradigm is the ability to interact with people in any other conversation paradigms without having to shift into their paradigm to have the conversation. Why would you ever have a conversa conversation with somebody in their paradigm? Why would you ever have a conversation with somebody in their paradigm? It's, you don't ever have to do that. Once you have clarity about uh, your paradigm of conversation. It's a, it's a completely relational. It's not about cutting off or separating or being better than or superior or different. It's about um, a commitment to and respect for the, your own context of your conversation as much as you respect other people's context of their conversation. And so, you know, if we don't the, the thing is, if we don't have conversations, we're left with ourselves. Think about that. Being left with this thing that you are by yourself. Like what kind of madness would that, would you, it's like looking in the mirror the whole time and not even understanding what you're looking at because you don't have another comparison to, uh, to look somewhere else. So we, we would just go around and around. I'm sure you have voices in your head, these conversations, these stories that you have heard a million times before. The, the viewpoint is like, it's like welded around each of us, this viewpoint of what's true, what am I, what's that, what's real, what's not real, what, what I call things, it's all, it's this, it's this welded shut, hermetically sealed worldview that has only one purpose in mind, and that is to defend itself. And <clears throat> without the authentic adulthood initiatory processes to bring you into your own center and your grounding cord and your bubble and your own context, then, then in, without, without these practices, it's uh, a trap. It's a mess. So we need each other desperately to get out of our own little box, our own little uh, isolation chamber. And so then we need conversation. And that's why the conversation and circle and community and 
the evolution of next culture to, it seems so important to me, in fact, crucial for the evolution of humanity on the planet, is, is our ability to determine and negotiate the context of the conversation even before we negotiate the conversation. So we'll, we'll basically do this, I mean, I will do this right now about what kind of conversation we'll be having tonight. And the tools, the distinction, the exercise that we'll be offering come, come out and emerges out of the context of possibility management, which is a context of radical responsibility. Which means that we relate to what we create as we are radically responsible for the way things are in our life. And from what Clinton was saying about, we need communication to grow. We need connection to evolve. And it seems to me, and even in my own experiences, that we could be avoiding conversation because we might be scared to be in a, what we would call an ordinary conversation where there is a victim and a persecutor and a rescuer and that we would be in a conversation that is not nourishing or fulfilling or evolving and that we might then we we avoid communication because we might be a victim of other people's need to be a victim or persecutor or a rescuer and what where we're going here tonight is, oh, and what Clinton was saying in the beginning, you never have to be a victim of the conversation anymore. If you decide so, you can choose what kind of conversation the conversation is. Go ahead. So to be clear at the very beginning, we're, we're making a distinction between an ordinary paradigm for a communication and an extraordinary paradigm for communication. And the conditions that we will meet, that you will meet from now on for the rest of your life, if you keep this distinction, is if you stay in an ordinary paradigm conversation and you meet somebody in an ordinary paradigm conversation, you will have a gremlin conversation. We call this word gremlin. And the gremlin is that part of ourself that serves shadow principles or irresponsible, creates irresponsibility, avoids responsibility. So mostly what happens in the world for people who have not made this distinction, this distinction is ordinary to ordinary context conversation. So it's a gremlin conversation and we'll explain what that is. But the alternative is an, ex an extraordinary context conversation, an extraordinary paradigm. And if you have a conversation between two people who are in the extraordinary paradigm, you have an extraordinary conversation. So both a gremlin to gremlin conversation is like a fair conversation because the, the gremlins are just trying to feed off of each other and win and be better and superior and faster and more beautiful and have more money and like that. And if you have a paradigm to paradigm where it's an extraordinary paradigm to extraordinary paradigm conversation, this is also what we call a fair conversation. It's fair because both people are taking radical responsibility for the evolution and the context of the conversation. The interesting time emerges where you have one person who's in an ordinary paradigm conversation and somebody else who's in an extraordinary paradigm conversation. And this is a conflict of purposes. It's a conflict of paradigms. And typically, what you have in a space is this conflict of paradigms at war with each other. So, and, and the question remains, so, 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 you know, most of us are just really nice people. And so we use semi nice means for trying to interact like if we want to have an extraordinary paradigm conversation and the person across from us wants to have an ordinary conversation, this is an unfair kind of conversation and we're still trying to make it fair. 
we're still trying to be nice to them or speak in their language or, and like, you know, mostly we're kind of sort of wasting our time. And at the end, we throw up our hands, shake our head, feel the pain of it. There's horrendous anger, huge sadness, and huge these days, huge amounts of fear about what's going to happen when the entire construct of modern civilization is based on uh, this ordinary conversation world and I don't know how to transform it. You know, and I have to throw up my hands and go to bed at night having failed even with my neighbor, maybe even with my own kids or partner to have an extraordinary to extraordinary conversation. How, how the, you know, put up your hands if you if you know what I'm talking about it's kind of like throwing up our hands about this yeah so so this is where we're about tonight and one of the one of the I, I want to kind of get into the exercise as fast as we can <laughs> because the the powerful paradigm shift comes from in an ordinary conversation we have something to say I have something to communicate I have a question that I want answered, or I have something to tell you. I want to make this an exchange of information. I want to understand. And this, these are the typical... Well, I want something. Yeah, I want something. I want to get something. This is the typical motivation for having a conversation. And we're, we're, we're going to have you practice an entirely different approach. It's a paradigm shift approach, which is to approach as a vacuum, to approach from not knowing, to approach from being uh, in, incapable of, or actually unwilling to put your worldview on top of the situation so that what you're looking at is your own poop, basically. You know, if you paint, if you paint the whole thing in something that you already understand, all you see is yourself. And so what we'll be practicing here is a kind of radical vulnerability of going into a conversation, whether it's a ordinary to extraordinary or even extraordinary to extraordinary, like is to go in there without, uh, without applying a pressure. It's instead applying a vacuum or another way to look at it is like pulling the rug out from under yourself to pull the rug out from under yourself so that in the conversation you have no position you are standing on nothing and I'll I just want to jump to the punchline because if you get this if the other person can join you in the bottomlessness, in the groundlessness of the conversation where you have pulled the rug out under yourself, they pull the rug out under themselves, you're both doing free fall into a bottomless pit, then, then actually you're flying. And then you can have a flying conversation. And this is a five body intimacy conversation. I don't expect you to understand what I'm talking about, I do expect you to think that I know what I'm talking about so that we have some chance of going there because uh, it's one of the most delightful experiences that I get to have quite often in my life because I've spent my whole life abandoning my physics degree and abandoning being a millionaire and just throwing myself into researching this as a way to share it with everybody is like how to converse while flying, how to negotiate five body intimacies in an emergent space, and a space that emerges as you're interacting. And that's where we're going with this. You were going to say something? Yeah, I want to say that um, there's a difference between radical vulnerability or radical brokenness um, and being adaptive. Mm. So a lot of us have a nice girl, nice boy box that would want people to love us. And, and therefore we would have this tendency to agree and what, how we call it is to give our center away that they can control the, the conversation that they wanna have because that's safe for them. 
And if they're safe, then you're safe. Okay, so this is what we were talking about. This is one of the ordinary conversation. It is possible to be in radical vulnerability and still be clear that you want to have an extraordinary conversation. So it's not about a position, but it's about the clarity of what, what you want to create with this other person, which is connection and authenticity and discovery or adventure or wherever you want to go in this extraordinary. I want to say it just a different way, which is like, we all have had experiences before and some of them we might think are good experiences and some are bad experiences. And we might think we want to duplicate or replicate the good experiences. And so we try to build up a space or a kind of connection that is like it was before. And every time we try to do that, we are in the past and you're not in the present anymore. And so the new paradigm that we're offering here in terms of the extraordinary conversation is to burn the place down, starting with yourself. And we'll be practicing this. I just want to give you a couple images. But it's like, instead of trying to say, I have a method, I ha there is no method here. This is not a method. This is, take the, take the kindling, take the match out, light everything you know, you just light it on fire and just let it burn to ashes. It's like this Phoenix process. It's like you start the conversation through, uh, through, through going into ashes yourself. And, and if you're lucky, the other person will catch on fire also. And they will, do it. they will join you in the transformational fire process. And who knows what will emerge, not necessarily what's on your agenda. So this is a different format to approach it by. But it starts with pulling the rug out from under yourself, you, and lighting yourself on fire, taking the known, your known procedures, methods, constructs, just throwing them in the fire and, and, and you shrink your now down to a small now and, and go from there. But mm -hmm. I would like to further distinguish the two. Okay, go ahead then. Every single one of you could, could be clear about what we're going to be clear about right now. So, but I, I just wanna be, I just wanna put it in the space. And so an ordinary, conversation is is what we learned from modern culture and i'm not trying to make beat up modern culture it's beating itself up just fine so i don't have to do any of that so the the point is that the the distinctions that formulate the context of an ordinary modern culture conversation have to do with for example trying to be right or trying to compete like competition is so interwoven into a conversation who's who's fastest like if there's a gap in time whoever fills the gap first owns the space so it's a power struggle it's a power game and it's I, about winning and losing go ahead i want to invite you while clinton make oh, yeah. makes this listen this distinction of there is a sensation and also it helps to make some notes because the next one we do, we're going to do extraordinary, make some notes for that. So if you have a paper, because you'll need these notes to navigate it. So you're making a little map for yourself. Go ahead. Okay. So when Clinton will start making this list, there is a sensation behind every of those moves. Like I want to be right. You, you know, how many people have you been in a conversation and you remember that you wanted to be right in the conversation? How many of you? Yeah. So, and it has a particular taste. It has a particular sensation. And that's what we call the experiential distinction. Okay. So the, the words are the intellectual distinction, but what will really help you is this experience of, oh my God, I, right now I'm trying to be right. I'm setting up an ordinary conversation. Okay. Which is the purpose. It's called the purpose. And we have a a website out there called Purpose Detector that's getting built. So it's, you have your own purpose detector that you can uh, detect each purpose. So, so there's, more, um, there's more hints about the ordinariness of a conversation. So some of them come from the, the patriarchy, for example. So in an ordinary conversation, men have a certain role, women have a certain role. And the 
and the um, LGBTQ uh, conversation is another format in this relatively ordinary conversation about who am I? I am, I am, I am like this. So I am in the patriarchy. There is this these roles that are we unconsciously play out, and so those are integrated into our languaging, into the status play, into the who has the higher status, upper status, lower status, where do you stand, where do you put your attention? These are, this is the kind of a, of an ordinary conversation. If, I mean, I'm sure that you've sat at cafe and looked at another table. And when you watch the people at the other table, possibly there's alcohol or smoking something and, and everybody's talking at the same time. So the everybody talking at the same time, the question is who's listening? So in the ordinary conversation, it isn't about actually completing communications. It's about putting out, it's almost like turning on a television or walking through the town is how many advertisements can hit us at the same time. So we're, we're completely lambasted. It's a, it's a, it's a, whatever can be the loudest wins, whoever's the loudest, fastest, first, most dominant. This is part of an ordinary conversation world. Uh, can I add something? Mm -hmm. so, any conversation that would allow as valid assumptions or mm. expectations or conclusions or projections. Okay. All of those are basis for ordinary conversation because you're not in the present. You are, you are with the assumption or they are with the assumption or the expectation or the conclusion about who I am and who you are and how this conversation should go. Which includes prejudices and it includes stories about how things are or how things should be. And it includes, uh, you said conclusions already. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, but it would also include, for example, rescuing. Mm. So thinking that somebody cannot do it by themselves and I have to do it for them or I have to speak in their name because they cannot speak, the assumption that they cannot speak. This is a rescuing which goes into this dynamic um, discovered by Dr. Stephen Cartman called the low drama low drama triangle, which is a dynamic of avoiding responsibility, which is what ordinary conversation is about, to avoid any kind of responsibility. So the reason we're going on and on about this is every single one of those indicators that we've just been listing is, uh, uh, the, is the hint about where you are on the map. So if you don't have your X on the map, the map is useless. You need the little X on the map to know where you are. So even if you're talking to a really nice person and, and they seem to be happy and everything seems to be fine, and part of the conversation includes uh, assumptions or expectation, then, you are, then the context of the conversation allows assumptions and expectations as if they are valid. And the <clears throat> giving those power formats the conversation as in the ordinary paradigm. So, so for you to let that slide is a collaboration on your part of participating in the ordinariness of the conversation. And so I'm going to throw a word in here that we will use probably later, which is when you notice that the contribution of a participant in a conversation is one of the elements that's trying to create an ordinary conversation, all you need to do is flip into a meta conversation, which means to have a conversation about the conversation and say, <clears throat> I noticed that you just offered an assumption and or a belief or a story or a conclusion and with this little subtle expectation that other people agree with you or that that's how this conversation will go well you know i'm not so interested in in 
having an expectation or an assumption or a story or a conclusion in our conversation. Are you sure you want to have it like that? So all of a sudden, instead of having the conversation, you're having a conversation about the conversation, which may not be what you thought you were going to be talking about, but it changes it into suddenly a risky conversation, a more interesting conversation. So all of a sudden people go, well, God, I have assumptions about everything. Well, isn't that interesting? You know, at least you're not um, trapped. You're not acting as if you're a, a, you've been trapped by the assumptions that the other person is bringing into the conversation. So the way out of that conversation is called a meta conversation, and we'll be practicing that. So, so okay. What, what about extraordinary? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So we've we've painted the map about the ordinary conversation. What does it look like when Horrible. you? Horrible. <laughs> it's just really bad. Bleak. It's bleak. You get little pointers about when you when you might fall into an ordinary conversation. Okay. Wait, does anybody know anybody who's ever been in an ordinary conversation before? Okay, I just wanted to make sure you knew somebody at least who has been <laughs> in an ordinary conversation. All right. Okay, so there is, there is indication, there's a map also for an extraordinary conversation. And the map starts with, in an, ordin in an extraordinary conversation, there is a space holder. There is somebody who's responsible for the responsibility that's taken in the space, that is responsible for the purpose and the extraordinariness. So if you're alone, having a conversation with yourself, then you're, you're the space holder. If there's two people, then you would be both space holders if you have a similar purpose, if you have the similar purpose of going into extraordinary. And, but if one purpose, if you have a conflict of purpose, one person is doing ordinary and the other, and you want to go into extraordinary, then this would be an unfair conversation. So there's a whole website and uh, yeah, skills to build how to navigate an unfair conversation. And we might, we might get there. So there's a, there's a lot, but one big hint is in an extraordinary conversation, you would be on the new map of feeling, which means that you would shift it from the old map of feeling, which are feelings are bad and to be avoided, to there are four feelings, anger, sadness, fear, and joy. They are neither good or bad. They are a neutral source of information and energy that I need in this conversation to make it extraordinary. And one more distinction is there is a distinction between a feeling and an emotion. So there is anger, sadness, fear, and joy, a feeling, and anger, sadness, fear, and joy, emotions. So if you can't make this, if you don't make this distinction, most of what we feel are emotion and they do not come from the present. They come from the past, or they come from authority figures giving us their emotion, or they come from a gremlin. And if the emotion is not put on the table, the emotion will create ordinary because it will try to, it will be about projection and assumption and expectation. So the new map of feeling is necessary for extraordinary. Uh, <clears throat> we could spend probably the rest of the hour and a half um, trying to distinguish and talk about the qualities of an extraordinary conversation space. But since we're going to be practicing, we only wanted to put a few of them out. And some of you are already very familiar with a lot of these already. And so what, um, in terms of, I want to mention though, that if you're having an extraordinary conversation space, you will, um, the idea of being a victim isn't possible. It isn't, it isn't actually possible. It's like, consider that who decides, for example, if you have a problem or not? Who decides when you have a problem? So actually we have the power to decide if we have a problem or not. And so in the same way, we have the power to choose whether we are a victim or not. This is, this is where the question of radical responsibility comes in. If I have a problem, I have defined it that way. If I am a victim, I've arranged it that way. If 
there, if I'm in a situation, if I created it that way. So, um, and circumstances turn out to be neutral. It turns out to be a, an actual, so if there's behavior, for example, like complaining, complaining is uh, trying to avoid responsibility, that would be an ordinary proposal for a conversation, complaining or blaming somebody or resenting somebody or justifying a position, trying to hold a position and justifying a position is ordinary. Um, judgments, voices in your head, Jesus, there's, okay, so, go ahead. Okay, so we want, we want you guys to practice what we've talked about a little bit in the beginning, which is called navigating toward undefendedness which is about pulling the rug out of, of under you that you don't have a position anymore in the conversation. And if you're having this kind of conversation, you don't have a position, the other person falls too. And this is the flying state. So you go first, you have more clarity, you take responsibility for the rug to be pulled out. So it will be in pairs, we'll break you up. And it will be two part to the exercise. The first part, one person starts and you just, when you're in pairs, you just decide, okay, I start. The other person just listens, okay? The other person is just a space holder. The first person, you just, you just go and you admit, actually, I've been, I've been blocking myself to be really present with you right now because I've been afraid about, so I am afraid right now about something in you that blocks me from being vulnerable and I'm putting it on the table. And you might have like two, three, four things. You just connect with the person and automatically your fear will tell you the ways that you're blocking yourself from having a connection and, and harvesting the jewels of this connection. And then the other person, when you, you come to an end, you'll have about like three minutes. And the other person, you complete a couple of things that you've heard. So you just repeat back saying, okay, I've heard you say that you're blocking your presence with me because you've been afraid of this and this in my presence. So, and that's it. Okay. Then we go back to the first person and then you admit, okay, I've been, I'm actually been stuck in my life. I, there's something that I, I, I'm, I'm stuck in my relationship or in my work, or there's, I, I'm, I'm not seeing the possibility here. I'm not seeing the opportunity and you have a key for me. What is, what is the key that you have for me? Please give me possibility. Please give me the key that I can't see. To get closer to you. Oh right. yeah. To get closer to you. Or are we, we're doing that one. Yeah. Or what? Or it was about, their life in general about something where they're stuck in their life. You no. to, okay. Okay. So the second part is please give me ways that I can be closer to you. How can I give me an experiment or practice or something that I can try right now about being more present with you? So what's amazing is most of you don't aren't really friends with each other yet. So we you can do this notice that you'll be able to do this with complete strangers because you're starting with yourself it's not like you don't know them it's how much do you know yourself and so the the, the layers that we have of ourselves. it's not about finding negative things about yourself it's finding where you're hypnotized or trapped or blocked or just you're confused or afraid it's like these are things none of these things are bad or wrong it's just your next layer and so the joy of connection is the joy of evolution and it's a team game it's a team effort so what you have is an intelligent an intelligence across from you in this circle and that you're going to take yourself apart in their presence as a complete stranger and ask for them to help you take the next step they're going to give you the golden keys for being able to connect with this new person out of the blue. I think Anne Chloe is magicking people into <laughs> groups here. And so, okay. Do, do you this, want to ask for questions or no? 
Go ahead, ask for uh, questions. And, yeah. I'm trying to ask you something on the chat, but you didn't see it. I would like to be with people that can speak Portuguese, because if not, it will be very difficult for me. Is okay, I am doing my best. I'm going to... Okay, thank you. Okay, a second. God, people I keep moving around. Okay, 26. Lincoln, may I ask something? Yes. Um, when you talk about um, relationships of power in the conversation, we are specifically, or are you specifically referring to these relationships within the context of the conversation or the facts uh, that some, like if you're engaging in conflict and someone stole or killed a kid or I'm just speaking generally, they were clearly, quote unquote, a victim of a grander situation how do you address that like if, if you're making you're taking radical responsibility how can you take radical responsibility for someone murdering your family could we start with something a little simpler than that like leaving the refrigerator door open well, th well that's it, it, those i understand very well just in terms of of how well understand i relate to very well the other one it's kind of creating a There's no glitch. difference there is no difference. I mean, it's, this is a whole other conversation, but there's no difference. You know, if I, if I put my head down by the side of the road and a car comes at the same time and it's too close to the curb, but I put my head in front of the mirror and it just smashes my head. Okay, whose fault is that? You know, if, if I send my kids to school without a bodyguard, I mean, it's like, I, if, if you're gonna take the position that you're not responsible, then you get to live as a victim. And if you, if you take the position that you are responsible, then you're not a victim. You created the circumstance. The, re, the, the circumstance will look the same, but the story will be very different. Like we were working with this with one woman who said, how can I be responsible that my father committed suicide when I was nine years old? You know, in front of me, basically. How am I responsible for this? And she, she finally figured out that the answer was a question. And the question is, who chose my parents? And when she had that perspective, she was no longer for the rest of her life a victim of her father committing suicide in front of her when she was nine years old because she chose her parents. And so it's, you know, what is true about it? Well, what is false about it? You know, there's, there's stuff and then there's stories and stories don't happen without human beings. So I'm a victim is a story. And if you, oh. if you get that, okay. So stuff happens, no story attached. The world doesn't have any stories in it at all. And it's even meaningless that it's meaningless, okay? Doesn't even mean anything that there isn't any meaning on anything. So, but we're human beings. We live in story worlds and game worlds and we build them and when you can, you can build game worlds that empower you and you can build game worlds that make you into a hopeless victim, powerless, destroyed, rejected, abandoned victim. And there's a payoff for both, for both kinds of stories. So who's making up the story? If, you're not, if you don't take responsibility for the purpose of the story you make, then you give that responsibility to society or to the sleeping culture around you. And if you want to live your life like that, go ahead. Just let other people make up the stories for you. But I don't think that's what you're here for. I mean, I think you're here to generate new stories. And that's what this is about. Cool. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I, I'm going to break you out in groups. And I'll, I'll repeat all the steps. Okay. So if you didn't get all the steps, it's fine. Elena, I'll put you with somebody who speaks Portuguese. Okay. Here we go. Oh, afraid of something in the other person so there was a couple question about this fear so you say i'm blocking myself from being present with you because i am afraid that 
you might judge me. I am afraid that if I say something vulnerable or something crazy that you might laugh at me or I might be ridiculed. Okay, so this this kind of fears. Okay. And it's and it's your effort is to navigate to undefendedness. Yeah. Navigate to undefendedness. See how well you can do that. This is a skill. You know, I want to say one more thing. Friend of mine, friend of mine was in a, a meditator, and he he was sitting there meditating, and he entered this space where he stopped thinking and he almost couldn't believe that he did not die. He was shocked that he did not die when he stopped thinking. So it's the same for us is like we, you, you might be shocked to discover that if you stop defending yourself, you don't melt down into a jelly pile. You don't die. You can navigate directly into undefendedness and something else emerges. Find out what that is. That's what this is about. Okay, let's go. Tell me again. Yeah. You're going to take it again. Yeah. Do you want to tell me you're going to take it again? Yeah, I said it. We've put you in breakout rooms. You just need to click on enter breakout room. Okay. And then Chloe's typing in instructions. She'll type in instructions each part of the way and the time and everything. So just keep going until she says change. Into you. Just give me a second for you guys. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a lot of space. Okay. Ah. Okay. What's going on? You didn't get a message. Okay. I was in break break room 18 and then I, I got out. So could you get me back to that one or a new one? Yes, at the bottom of your screen, you have a lot of little buttons and you have a breakout room button. And usually it would say, join back. There was no it? one else, no one joined me in my room. Okay, would you? And when you said go, you sent the message go so quickly that it removed the other one before I read it. Okay. Which, yeah. Just give me a second. Oh, so That's many okay. Breakout mm. room 30. So my proposal is that Jake and Sarah, can you do it right now? So there's, and that would be recorded. And that would be an example of navigating to undefinedness and we can even coach you a little bit is that okay sure yeah i need i need the steps but i'm fine with that yeah the steps would be really helpful i'm really Wait. new to this yeah jake if you want to start and it's about just revealing just connect with sarah and you say right now i've actually been blocking myself from being present with you because i i'm scared i'm afraid of hi Sarah. Saray. No. Saray. Yes. I am, uh, right now I'm blocking myself from connecting to you further um, because I'm, I'm afraid that because I can't see your face that I, I can't, I don't, I'm missing something important. Um, it, it's, yeah, I, I, I'm afraid that now, now I'm afraid that like my, um, that my desire to like, I'm seeking comfort in that as a way to sort of get out of just showing up and being vulnerable first. So I, I'm, I'm 
yeah, and that's distracting me in mental games. Um, what, what, do I just keep going? Yes, for a little while, yeah. Okay, just check like what I'm scared of is blocking me in this moment. Or I like. You keep, I just keep. Yeah, was just what what I'm scared of is blocking me in this moment from intimacy. Yeah, connecting. It's about navigating to undefendedness with Soray. Okay, great. Um, yeah, it is. I I have this fear that um, it, it's that like based on on how you. I, 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 I'm actually it's like scared that somehow um, based on how you look I will find it easier or more challenging to connect with you and uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared that it's like without being able to see your face I don't know if you're a trustworthy person I guess and um, yeah I'm locking myself from communicating with your connecting to you in this moment because I heard you say that you're new to this and I'm uh, no I can see your video it's just the face is dark <laughs> I can just okay. only see half of your face um, okay and Jake come to an end and then Saray you just repeat back what you've heard Jake say in this communication Yes, um, Jake, I heard you say that you were um, scared that there might be information you're missing because you can't see my face very well or can't see very well because the environment around me is dark. Was there anything yeah. else, Jake? Yes, and it, and um, I'm it's like I'm I'm scared that uh, that uh, I don't know how to say it. It's it's like I'm I'm scared that I'm blocking myself from intimacy because it's like I I have this story that. Unless I can see your face, I can't trust you. And 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 I'm scared that that story is true. It's it's like yeah, and and so I'm like oh, yeah, that blocks me from into, from connecting. Um, and and it, it it's also like because you, when you said that you're new to this, it's like I I I get scared that somehow something you do will like trigger some trauma in me and in some way because you won't be careful enough and it's like this this yeah and, and, and i'm and that scares me um and and yeah okay so please come to an end and then jake it would be back to you about asking saray Please give me keys about how I can be more connected or get closer to you. Okay, Saray, how can, can you please give me some keys about how I can get closer to you or be more connected to you? <clears throat> um. I don't know, we could try an experiment um, where would it make you feel better if if um, we sh you also had less light in your room? You, you, th you, the, you think a, a key for me about how I can be closer and more connected to, to you could be to hide my face in some way too with the light. 
It could be one experiment. Okay, thank you. So, Sora, would you give them, would you just keep sort of reaching in you and being, and keep saying, well, that would help me, but that might, that might help you actually, that's the question. That might help you, Jake, if you ask me this question or if you actually, or if you listened or whatever you would need, whatever you could offer for him to be more connected to you. To reach you. To reach you, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of confused because I feel like I could easily solve this problem by just bringing in more light and I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know how asking him to do something. I'm not, nothing is coming up for me right now in how he could do something. I could explain myself, I could shift my light, but I don't wanna change what's going on over here. I, I, I'm feeling like this conversation is about not changing what I'm doing so that he can feel better. I don't, not people pleasing, for instance, by changing my light or by reassuring him. So I'm not really sure what to say. What if you try saying something like, it's okay with me if you're afraid. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you could trust an experiment. You could trust that it's okay with you that he's afraid. Hmm. I'm going to help out in another room and then I'll be back in the main room. Hello, Han. Hi. My, part, my partner dropped from the call. So. Okay. Okay. I'll try to bring them back in. Thank you, Virgil. And I guess the thought would be it, it's like, there's probably something deeper behind that. Mm -hmm. So even if you do the thing to make in this moment to change the problem, I've still got the capacity to get freaked out by that somewhere in me. So it, it, it's mm -hmm. my question to you is, is like, yes, I could just make a request to make the issue go away temporarily, but it's not going to be helping me in the long run if situations like this arise. So my mm -hmm. request is, is like, you know, maybe you have some like golden dust for me <laughs> that could support me to not only connect to you in this moment but to connect to everyone that i come into contact with in the future in a deeper way I'm gonna pause you yeah for just sorry clara um virgilio is waiting for you in the other breakout room and you can join it back again at the bottom of the screen Thank you. yeah there is a breakout room button you can say join again Thank you. I, I do have one question because we weren't really, I don't think we were doing it quite right. And I'm unclear now about, and I put a question in the main chat to just tell us again, if you wouldn't mind, how do we start? What's the intention to try and get close to each other? Yes. It's to and to and observe the barriers. Away the things. It's to take away, it's to identify the things that are in the way. You can't okay. get closer because there's blocks and stuff. So just admit right. them. you admit them. Share them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um so I think Jake, you had just expressed that you were wanting some golden dust from me. <laughs> and um one thing I was hearing from you um, earlier was that um, like there seems to be this underscore that um, you're you're scared of finding out that it's true that you're maybe blocking yourself from intimacy um, and maybe it would be helpful to let you know that I'm okay being in this space with you so we can explore this intimacy however we're showing up. How does that land? I, 
I would propose, sorry, I think probably Jake seems to have heard you and now you could just say thank you and now you change roles. So Saray, you're the one who connect with Jake and then you say, I've been blocking my presence because I've been afraid of. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, yes, I've been blocking. Hi, Jake. Um, I'm blocking my presence and connectedness with you because I started noticing a lot of emotions and feelings coming up for me um, around a completely different experience that I've had recently. Um, and I feel like I'm living sort of in the past a little bit um, with vulnerability. Um, and Um, I, I feel like it's not about you. <laughs> um, so maybe. So um, I'll give you a little coaching. So okay. mostly the fears when you say, when you're going to navigate towards undefendedness and you say, I'm afraid about this. And I, I'm afraid of being present with you about this it often has nothing to do with the other person, but it right. really helps to put them on the table and be really clear about them. And then, then it's out there and then you can move to something else. So it's, you know, I don't know if you want to share your experience or you, you say, I'm afraid because this might happen again. And I, I don't want it to happen again. It could be just that. Mm. Um, I'm afraid of being highly emotional in front of a group of people. And that's why I'm blocking connectedness with you. Yeah. Sarah, I would invite you. So Jake, either you repeat back now or Sarah, you just share the next, the next thing, but you can go back and forth if that's easier. Yeah. I, I hear that you're, that you're scared of being in a place of having highly emotional in front of a group of people. And that's blocking you from connecting to me in this moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's happening, and so I don't, I don't, I've, I'm feeling a lot of, like, not wanting to be here right now, or to, like, turn my camera off. Uh, so, Ray, this is Clinton. I just want to say that the sense of not wanting to be here is, <laughs> we know this because it is, we think, we think we're not okay. So the old thinking about feelings is if you feel something, you're not okay. That doesn't work in this conversation. If you feel something, you're finally entering presence. And then you can just say, I feel sad. I feel anger and fear mixed together. I feel fear and sadness mixed together. And just only he's going to do is listen. And that what happens to most of us is almost none of us ever had anybody listen to us with that clarity. So just try it as an experiment. Just try it. He's just listening. Try it. It's a new territory. It's an experiment. I think you can do it. Um, You're doing super. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't really talk. I'm having a lot of emotion come up. Doing super. Just tr let your heart talk. It has a different voice. And you can start with, I feel, and it can be anger, sadness, fear, and or joy. Um. Let your voice get different. Your heart has a different voice than your mind. Mm -hmm. 
I just don't, I can't. <laughs> you could say, I feel scared to let you see me feel things because. Um, uh, I feel scared to let you see me this way because it feels really vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It feels really vulnerable. And you don't know me. <laughs> I don't know you. Can I add in just a little thing there? What's amazing about this is the anger is the same for everybody. And the sadness is the same for everybody. It's a, it's a universal language. We've been doing this with people all around the world. And the four words, anger, sadness, fear, and joy, it's a universal language. So even though he doesn't know you, he knows those feelings in him. And through that, you can connect. So Ray, can she see Doris? Yeah. So Ray, can you see Doris? Doris, put the cloth down. Just look at her. So Ray, can you see Doris? She's feeling, Doris, what are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, I'm right there where you are, Sarah, because I'm with my friend, my new friend on that point that it's the same point. I'm so shy. I'm, I don't want to have that he sees me in that state of, and I feel like crazy or I'm not able to show myself up in that. Or she calls herself Saray. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I, I can connect totally to your feelings totally right now. <laughs> Thank you, Doris. Thank you. It's a saray, it's the same sadness. The story is different, but the feeling is the same. I think you have a minute or two, or I don't know what the instructions are now. Just keep going, you guys are doing great. Okay. Um. I'm not really sure where to go right now. So right, you could even you can connect to Doris right now. You could connect to Doris and say, Doris, would you give me a key about how I can get a little closer to you? Um, uh, <clears throat> Doris, I'm feeling a lot of fear. Could you maybe give me a key of how I could connect to you? Great. Yes. Can, can you tell more about that fear you are feeling? And I can understand. Doris, Doris she's asking for a key. So why would that why would that bring her closer to you if you if she told you more about her fear? What's the, how does that bring her closer to you? Yeah, because I can understand you better, and it is possible that it's the same as my fear, what I have to show up. So, so Ray, you can do it or you can not do it. It's just Doris is giving you an, an option. It's an experiment. So you can either say yes or you can say no. Or for later. Or for later. Um, I feel in a really vulnerable place already. And I don't want to process my other emotions that I have with other people in a group setting right now. Is there another way that we could maybe find of connecting? 
Great, that's super, sir. So Doris, for example, you could say, actually, I would, I would just want you to be in silence for the, the last minute and if we could just look in each other's eyes, you know, that could be a key. Or I heard, or Doris, you could say, yes, here's my WhatsApp number. Let's have a conversation tomorrow. Because Saray said, could we, could we do this another time? Yeah. Not that, a feels, not a yeah. that feels like a great idea because I feel the same confusion if I'm emotionally that I'm not able to hold space right now or I'm not able to show up myself in a group and wanting to be seen is for me horrible. Yeah, if you like to, I, I can send my WhatsApp and we can do that. That feels great for me. Um, thank you. I don't have a WhatsApp application, but um, I appreciate you extending yourself in that way and um, uh, I, I, I think, thank you for saying that. Great. People are going to start coming back in and you can, Jake, Doris and Sarah, you could just thank each other if you want for doing this in the team. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you, Doris. Jake and Doris. I appreciate you. I'd like to add something to Saray because actually you helped me a lot in my state of mind where I am right now with your emotions. Thank you. <laughs> really sad. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay, just wait for a second. I would, everybody, you can take a deep breath just to shift from the being in pairs to being in the group. Okay, everybody's back. All right. I don't know if you remember the first time you tried to ride a bicycle first time you tried to peel a mango, or the first time you tried to sing in harmony with somebody, these, these are skills. And skills, even perfected skills like those ice skaters who can throw each other up in the air and while they're ice skating, you know, even those aren't, they, nobody ever gets a 10 they get, you know, 9.2 or, you know, these are skills that can be developed. So here we are first time trying really internal navigating skills and communicating externally. The best that we can hope for is to crash really well. So I hope you all crashed really well in this experiment. And what, what we're going to do instead of um, spending the time discussing how well or unwell we crashed, we're going to throw you in a whole nother experiment with all other people and crash again. So this next one is such a, is such a valuable thing to practice. You know, this is an introduction to the, this possibility. I hope that you have a possibility team. Uh, Vera, if you could put that um, website, please, if you can make yourself a possibility team or get in an online possibility team. They're all over the world to practice these things together. It's fantastic. So um, the next thing we'd like you to do is what's called a culture to culture conversation. We will do it in groups of three and the third person is going to be the coach. So one of you will be we call it a possibilitator. So you're going to be the one holding your own culture and you're going to tell the person, one of the second person, you're going to say, I'd like you to role play my uncle Bob. 
I'd like you to role play the lady at the tax office who I have to go see. I'd like you to role play my, the neighbor who plays saxophone in the middle of the night. I'd like you to role play a police officer. So you tell them, you give them somebody to role play for you who is in an ordinary context, pretty much without awareness. And you are going to have a conversation with them from your extraordinary context without giving your center away, without giving your context away. And the key to this is amazement. The key to this is curiosity. The key to this is to respect your culture with as much respect as you would respect their culture. Now, thousands of times you have given the context of your culture away to the people around you to be acceptable to them or to be not seen as a weirdo or to be um, to try to fit in so that you won't be burned as a witch again. You know, you have, we have these deep cellular memories of if we don't fit in, we die. So those times are over, those times are past. The future of humanity is diversity. Diversity leads to stability. Diversity is, is the, the, the source of intelligence. So, so the ability is to be able to converse with people who have um, a culture that's different from yours without giving up your culture. So you will, so for example, so the possibilitator says, please be my Aunt Martha, who, who is a secretary at a large corporation. And then the person across is the role player. They spin around or shift into Aunt Martha, Martha Smith. I'm a secretary at a large corporation. And the third person is the coach. And the coach is the one with eyes on the possibilitator so that if you adapt, if you give your culture away, if you start speaking in their language, if you stop being amazed, if you stop asking questions about, gosh, what, what is it like to hold um, money with so much value? Like, what, how, could you, how could you exchange your hours for dollars? Like, what makes you do that? I'm so interested that you could live a life wearing these poly, polyurethane clothes and fitting into a patriarchal hierarchy structure and feel okay about yourself. Could you just explain that to me? I just really want to understand how you could get on the same bus every day and go to work and leave the house that you love to be in. Like what, how could you sacrifice your actual value to try to provide value defined by somebody else as your boss in the world? These are the kinds of questions that you ask another person with curiosity and respect. And you honor their culture, but you have amazement. You're just astonished that a human being would do that and just be amazed and keep asking. But if you give your culture away, your coach is gonna say, beep, you just gave your culture away, shift, go. And the coach tell them exactly, go beep immediately and tell them exactly the way they gave their center away, how they gave their authority away how they stopped respecting themselves as much as they respect the others, how they're playing child, how they're playing judgmental, critical, how they're being a, in negative or abusive or fighting, if they're hooked by fighting, or it's not it, you just say beep. This is a respectful, honorable, amazed conversation. It is so entertaining, and you get to actually be your own culture. So and then, and Chloe will send a message, so, It'll be how long, five, seven minutes? Yeah, seven minutes. About seven minutes in each roll, and we'll send a message, you rotate, and we'll do this three times, so you get to be in each one of the three roles, possibilitator, role player, coach. In groups of three. Let's go. Here we go, Mr. Wizard. Can you give us, can you write it so that it doesn't disappear so fast? Because it stays for about 
a split second and you can't read it. Okay, I'll do my best. So it's really frustrating. Okay, thank you. I'll do my best. Thanks. Okay. See, we have a group of three here. Wonderful. Uh, Atal? Yeah, um, I'm not meant to be here. I was shot back here. I'll have to go. I'm just working out how to go back. Okay, Sorry. At, you, it's fine. At the bottom of your screen, there should be a bar with like your video and little buttons, and there should be a, yes. a button called breakout room. Yep, got it. Fantastic. Thank Sorry. you. Yeah. Is there a third person who can join me and my partner, Denise, in our breakout room? Yes. Uh, Vinetta, I'll put you in breakout room four. Cool. Thank you. And Tatiana, I'll put I'll put you in the breakout room also in breakout room twelve. Let's see. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go there. Is everybody back? Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you for engaging such strange people in strange ways. It takes courage to do this, and I just uh, feel glad to be in the company of so many courageous people. I'm asking, we have a few minutes left, if anybody be willing to share what you noticed or if there's any specific question, then we will formally come to an end in about 12 minutes and then we'll stick around here for another 10 or 15 minutes if there's anybody else who has wants to talk about something. So, anybody have anything? Yeah. Hi, this is uh, Aman. Hello. And, uh, like, hello. And uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I think this uh, whole conversation about the possibilities and the role player, the coach uh, w went very well, frankly. And uh, it was not uh, difficult uh, based on your explanation. One could really make out how we have to uh, create a scenario and then get into the role. Uh, and we were able to do it among the three of us meaningfully. There were some meaningful inputs coming from the coach. Uh, the slight, uh, the only uh, issue that uh, you know I faced in my conversation was when I was a coach. Uh, 
during this short span, uh, I felt that if I interrupted the uh, kind of uh, ordinary conversation, then it will just break the flow. So I let the conversation happen because it was for three minutes or whatever. And then I thought, uh, I, note, I made a note of uh, the uh, ordinary conversations where they were getting into, you know, the leading questions and your paradigms and rather than curiosity and uh, uh, this uh, uh, amazement driving the conversation, it was more about the paradigms. But if it were a trend, then maybe I would have interrupted the conversation but i thought that it was happening it happened once during the uh, thing so i didn't feel like interrupting the flow and i let it happen and later on as a coach then i provided the feedback that uh, maybe one one place uh, there was a, almost like a leading question where your paradigms came into the way so uh, that was just a small observation any so so thank you let me just explain the difference <clears throat> we just learned that when we wait till the end and then read the notes that they have to go back in time try to remember the, the circumstance so it immediately puts them in their mind and then they have to understand your notes and try to put those together in their mind and then the mind is just whoosh, it's just easy to forget things like that so what we found is we use this method of rapid learning which is interrupting in the moment of the behavior that is so fast and it's that they catch themselves. It's the opportunity to catch themselves doing it right then. And then there's five bodies worth of information about why am I doing this? How did it happen? Where was I thinking? What was I feeling? And it's a snapshot. It's like beep right now a whole five body picture and it, we found that it's it works better to do that for the rapid learning method but thank you thanks for sharing that cool thank you thank you for explaining that thank you yeah vera could you post those two the rapid learning and the uh, which is called go beep should go in the vacuum learning thank you somebody else no what yeah i would enjoy saying something yes and then time um, for the next <laughs> I um, I felt very happy to have so much space for my curiosity and through like, oh, I'm not used to be able to ask questions, whatever I want, uh, getting to actual questions that came from curiosity and the feedback of the role player helped, no? because I said something and I said something and then that gave me a doorway to ask a question. And then listening to my colleague in the conversation also asking questions, he said something like, so do you feel something when you're doing this? And then I, I thought it would be like more juicy to like, do you not feel something if you're like, but I thought that that's a kind of an assumption, but I feel it's kind of juicy to admit I have a assumption. So I was just wondering, like, there's no, I get into like a right or wrong question a little bit, no, but yeah, that was my field of research. Keep researching. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Tanya, Thank you. you said something? Well, who's somebody else? Tanya had her hand up. Can I just say, oh. okay. I just want to say something about this coaching. And it's really about harvesting the group intelligence. Because we in this conversation, and it's like, God, I don't know what to say. And then, and then the coach has ideas. And when you are sitting in the coach position, also, you have ideas, but being in this conversation is kind of being the deer in the heads light or something. It's mm. like being so, and the, what I've discovered is that I can, even on a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I can ask the other person, please coach me about how I can say that differently that you would understand me. Like, please coach me about how I can get closer to you. Please coach me, give me possibilities about how we can get out of a misunderstanding. So you can really use this even in a, like just one-on-one -on -one conversation. And, and it, that's a way of having a meta conversation. Clinton mentioned it earlier about having a conversation about the conversation is please coach me. Yeah. Cool. Does anybody else has? A comment or Tanya? Okay. No, Tanya said she didn't have. Yeah. 
Doris or just there's a few pages so just start speaking and say your name when you start me go ahead okay because I checked in out of a coaching and I was totally right in that uh, thing was Sarah had um, if you're very emotionally and I was not able to show myself with that man I'm with since three months I felt so ashamed so difficult to talk really about what's going on what can you do right in that moment if you notice that you are you're feeling like crazy you you don't want to be heard you want to be seen you everything is messed up what can you do right in that moment to you admit it <clears throat> it's called it's the way to be authentic is to be authentic about your inauthenticity. Be authentic about your inauthenticity. Be, reveal your incapacity, like yeah. admit it. And yeah. th this is vulnerability. Then you have presence and you have connection. That's, what, that's the, the first tool we were trying to learn here is that. So that's what you do. And then wait. Yeah. Like try to not cover it up with anything. Just wait and see what, what's next. And it's not about trying to make yourself bad or wrong or stupid or, or a weak. victim. Yeah. Not a victim. No, it's not about that. It is really all of us are improvising. We are, we are not, nobody knows, like Anne Chloe said, nobody knows how to do this. So, but if, if you can stay there and go, mm, it's not working. It's not working. And it's not working because I find that I'm, I have a fear, I have this anger, I'm in my head, whatever. If you just reveal that, then you can actually be where you are. It's fantastic. Thank you, Doris. Uh, yeah. Venita or Vera, one of you guys. Uh, Venita was. Venita. So, uh there are uh, sometimes there are situations where when you say okay what would you like from me in a conflicting situation when the other person is getting very upset you ask what do you what how can i like what exactly i can do to help in the situation and the thing is you are making me angry and you have to tell me why you are making me angry and any any amount of ex, uh, saying that to, you know empathizing with that anger is not enough because the other person is seeking that it's not able to take the responsibility for the trigger within it's it's projected on the other person and it go sometimes can go on for years so how does one navigate that part do you want to go ahead is this a fair or unfair conversation it has been through fair and unfair phases both. okay what you're talking about is an unfair conversation that's the definition if somebody is using emotions and projecting it, and it has nothing to do with the present moment, these are emotions. They come, they're about somebody else in another time, another place, and they're directing it at you. And so this is, and for you to see that, you go, ah, oh, this looks like a, is this a feeling or an emotion? And if, it, when I'm talking to somebody about that, and they don't know anything about possibility management, I don't have any other conversation, sorry, besides that. I only say, is this a feeling or an emotion? And when they finally realize it is an emotion, I say, are you ready to do your emotional healing process? And when they don't, when they say no, I say, okay, the conversation is over. It has nothing to do with me, as you're just trying to project on me, I'm not available for this, see you later, go find somebody else. But if they say yes, then they're ready to go through the emotional healing process. And that's the gold. That's the gold part of the emotions. Is it's so valuable to use each emotion. 
we have people now in the trainer path. There's a, there's a path of people learning to become possibility management trainers. And there are people in the trainer path who are doing this experiment for one, two, three weeks of every single emotion they have to go through the healing process. And they have a whole team in the trainer path. They have a WhatsApp group. You can call people anytime, day or night. I'm having this emotion reaction, I'm, my panic attack. I'm so angry. And you and take me through the process. I know it's an emotion. Take me through the process. And there's, they do two, three, four, five processes every day, and they are growing up so fast. There's so much healing, and it's all teamwork. It's a wonderful experience. It's really fabulous. I, yeah. I want to say a couple things. One of is the question of Nina about what is an emotional healing process. Yeah. And it's so there's this distinction between feelings and emotion. And emotion come from the past, authority figures, so from other people, like the church or the government or your parents or um, your gremlin. And you can find the source of that emotion. If it comes from the past, probably there is a moment where there, you had a feeling, you couldn't express it and, it, and it kind of turned into a knot and it stayed into your five bodies. In an emotional healing process, you can go back there and finally express it. And maybe you've made an old decision. Maybe you've split a part of your energetic body. A lot happens in those stress moments. And it's just to heal that moment that wasn't heard. So that's the a process. It can be between 10 minutes and a, an hour and a half, something like that. And there's a group of people who are trained to take people through that. And the other thing I wanted to say also about what Clinton was saying, like we are nice people and maybe a lot of us have this tendency to want to listen to other people and to want to listen to when people having emotions and anger and sadness and fear. And this clarity that Clinton brought in saying, okay, this question, is it a feeling or an emotion? If it's an emotion, are you willing to go through the process? If not, the conversation is over. This clarity is everybody, every one of us has hundreds of emotions. And you have other jobs than to be an emotional garbage can for people. Because no matter how much you listen, nothing will change for them. So when you say, you know, is, is it an emotion? Yes. Do you want to go through the process? Yes or no? You're taking a stand for them to actually heal and grow up and be present with you. So it's not about being mean or being disconnected. It's about taking a stand for your time and your dignity and for their healing and their growing up. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. Cool. Okay, I would close the space officially as it's time. Go ahead. Okay. People, thank you very much for experimenting and conscious crashing on first <laughs> bike riding and all sorts of experiment and, and trusting each other to, <clears throat> to be vulnerable like that. And I just want to say there's so much more to learn about this. I mean, this is so entertaining and so transformational and so rich. And so full, and there's no method. There is no method, but there's there's so many distinctions, and there's so much richness to the and depth to the context. So I, please dive in. Please explore the Start Over game platform. There's 358 websites ready for you to play with and do experiments. So I'm gonna jump in because I haven't mentioned that in in the different workshops that I've held in the conflict transformation, but the the training, look, the training path for the, the, yeah, the training path for possibility management starts really with expand the box. So this is one of our core training that there is about 20 trainers around the world who deliver expand the box training. It's a, between three and five days. And it's a, an, it's a initiatory, an adult and archetypal initiatory space that opens the door to do possibility labs. And if you commit to do 10 possibility labs, then you're on the path of becoming a trainer. <laughs> and then I, I enroll you. I enroll you in being a, a possibility management trainer. So and the just, world needs trainers right now. We need edge workers, rift walkers, bridge builders, possibilitators. We need these things. The whole world needs these things. 
So please, 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 uh, these careers are not listed in the tax form. And it doesn't say, what are you? I say, I'm a medic engineer. I'm a rift walker. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a transformational circle alchemist. What are you? So you guys have jobs that are not listed in the tax form, okay? Claim your job and do your job. The world needs you out there, really, please. Cool, thank you for being here. We say goodbye to people who have to go and we'll be around for a few minutes left. Thank you very much. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> cool. See your smile. Yeah. Okay. Freelika, you are still here. Yes, I don't want to leave. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good. Do I have to leave? No. Don't have to I leave. I was kidding. I didn't just ask that question. Okay. Don't. But I know you can make me leave. No. Nope. I have the power. Hands <laughs> off. <laughs> okay, if anybody has questions or you can just hang out here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really, I would like to share that. I find it really cool that suddenly, I don't know if it's the, uh, it's because of the Corona cool, coolest stuff ever or what, what, but suddenly like in the random day when I am still here in Estonia in my home, I can just get together with so many people from all over the world and really just like experience going deeper with them all of a sudden. Like just this evening after making my regular dinner, you know. <laughs> and thank you so much for making that happen. Great. Thank you. Naomi's asking to talk to you. Yeah, I just, so Tanya, I saw your question. There was a couple more people who had their hand up. So, so Marta and then Deborah, I think. Yeah, hi. So thank you for this. Very useful. So all of this is a bit new to me. And when, so my way of curiosity and, you know, and all of that would be to turn towards, okay, so when have you experienced, you know, if someone's angry, tor turning towards like what might be their values or their life experiences or, you know, be curious about how they come to feel about it that way or be that way or, um, and so I wonder, but that didn't come up today. It was very much about the present. And because that's about their past, for me, it's about their present because it's how they got here, but it's, it's different. So I wonder if you've got anything to say about that sort of approach. Go ahead. I didn't get it. Okay. The answer is <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, I mean, we probably have some, I would probably have something to say, but I didn't understand the, the question. Okay, so what I was asking is, if to be curious about this person in their present moment, I'm, my strategy tends to be to ask about their past. Ah, then mm -hmm. you're a therapist. To, to try, because I try to make a map of them, because that's the you way I get forward. curious. Yeah, okay. So why would you want to do that? See, modern Western culture is contexted in the Freudian, Jungian, psychotherapeutic context. So we do analysis. We've been trained to be analysts. Oh, when did that first happen to you? What, what, all, these, all these kind of, we want a picture of somebody's psychoanalysis so we can relate to them. So what that does is it minimizes a person into a story world called psychoanalysis. And it, it, um, the difference between that and what we're doing here is that the work of possibility management has nothing to do with psychoanalysis. It is based on possibility, which is a bright principle. So it's an entirely different way to relate to the world. 
It's an entirely different way to relate to the world. It works and it's very fast and it's very deep and powerful and very effective because you don't drag the past with you necessarily. So in each moment, which can be shrunk down to three seconds or even less, in each moment you have access to new possibilities and this is requires no understanding of the past. It has to do with three powers, the power of choosing, the power of declaring, and the power of asking. And these three powers are, are energetic powers. They can happen right now. And so using those three powers, you can produce uh, new choices in, without having any connection to the past. It does not have to have a segue. It doesn't have to be reasonable. There's an amazing website called Become Unreasonable. And uh, um, so I encourage you to check that out. And, and don't, don't worry if while you're learning about this, Marta, don't worry if it feels a little weird at first, because you, you will be, you're taking your assemblage point, which is another amazing website called, an, uh, a, your, it's called your assemblage point or assemblage your point, point? point of your origin. point of origin you're moving your point of origin from the context of psychotherapy to the context of possibility and in between it's not connected to anything so and it feels very strange to, in that middle time but don't worry if it feels like that just for a little while thank you for your question i hope it was useful so there was this question i'm just going to read uh uh, Rujud Rai, because a couple of people had the same question. So what about when people who don't want to go through emotional healing are family or people you depend on for basic needs, survival, so food, shelter, job, and housing? Most of the people in our society right now seems to fall in that category. You are in deep shit then. <laughs> I mean, you may as well just like, get the shovel out and start just it is no really um look at don't you have enough problems already I, mean, I have enough problems i don't have to worry about the whole society all those people that i depend on for basic basic needs i mean i ate some potatoes today who grew the potatoes well these guys here in creta they grew the potatoes so I have a connection to the people in now. Do they want to do emotional healing processes, the farmers from Creta? I don't think so, but you know, they were willing to sell me some potatoes using this fake currency called euros. So I played in their game world enough to get the potatoes and the rest of my day, I was in my game world. What were you gonna say? No, and that's when the culture to culture conversation yeah. becomes useful <clears throat> because you need the farmers who grow the potatoes even if they're not gonna have an extraordinary conversation with you, and you can make offers. Yeah, you can plant seeds. It, it, don't underestimate the power of planting seeds in the people who don't have any idea what you're talking about. So when we go, when we go to town, it's a seed planting journey. I mean, normally we have these cards that have a bunch of websites on, and we just kind of litter them around all over the place so people find this cool picture and a bunch of websites and so that's one kind of seed but usually if somebody if somebody says well where do you come from i say well i come from the nano nation of possibilica it's a it's a nomadic nano nation with 10 people and we're i'm a i'm a transformational circle alchemist and would you like me to do some work for your for your circle of influence and they're like, what the heck is he talking about? You know, but I'm not lying. I am not lying and I'm unwilling to get out of my culture just to have answer their question, like, where do you come from? I don't do it. I just refuse to answer the question in their context. So I yeah. mean, the closest that, so we were in <laughs> Athens and we went into this shop, which is called Alchemy Shop. So. Yeah you know, pretty close to game world alchemist and transformational circle alchemist. And, and we were having this extraordinary conversation with this guy who called himself the count. So there was some hopes there in terms of seed planting. And 
after a few, like maybe 10, 15 minutes, the best that he could put us in was, are you guys from the CIA or what? <laughs> and that's, so, you know, we were so weird that that's how, where he had to put us. <laughs> And at the same time, I think he remembers us now. So we didn't have a card then, but yeah, yeah. yeah you never have to stop playing. You never have to get off it, really. Vin Vinetta. So uh, I'm going back to the conversation you were having just before this one, uh, where uh, as a possibility worker, you're looking at possibilities and not going into the past. I understand that. At the same time, what is coming to my mind is that when you're exploring possibilities with people, there are things being triggered. And when, when that person is not ready, there is something being triggered inside. And you say that you take them aside and then you uh, work with what is triggered for emotional healing and then bring you bring them back into the circle yes so if what happens in this space of emotional healing uh, with that though that emotional turmoil that comes that surfaces due to trigger just say the last sentence again what happens what uh, what what process you follow mm -hmm. for emotional healing of the emotions that get triggered yes so in the same circle please even though i will say something now please read the process website there's very good information on that there's many many ways it depends on what's going on so for example there's um we, uh, Vera, will you put down the floor processes website? We have like 10 floor processes that people can do. And let's say, let's say a person has kind of a fear panic thing going on. Okay. So it's where we put our fear is in our diaphragm. We, it's this diaphragm muscle between our lungs and okay. So there's fear locked in there. So when they're ready to go through, uh, the healing process, the emotional healing process to take responsibility for putting the emotions into their diaphragm, you do the floor process called the diaphragm process. And it's, and then all of a sudden they, they can breathe differently, they can move differently, their back aches gone, they can speak differently, they laugh differently, you know, and it, or else it could be, maybe they don't speak, maybe they, so many people put blocks, energetic blocks around their throat or above their heart. And then you do this surgery of taking the, the block out and giving it to another little boy or girl to save their life. They can take this block out because it saved their life to disempower themselves. Or maybe they have a, a mind machine. There's six or seven different kinds of mind machines that people put in between their ear and their brain. So somebody says something and the sound goes in and then what they hear is a totally different question than the one that you ask. And they answer this other question. You go, I, I didn't ask you that question. You know, I say, you say, what time is it? And they say, my shoes aren't ready yet. And it's like, how, how, how okay, well, they have a mind machine in there. So that's an emotional healing process to do this surgery to, to, to bypass the mind machine if they're ready to do it. So there's dozens and dozens of all di kinds of different emotional healing process depending on what's going on for them. People have brain splits, people have uh, old decisions they made in past lives even. There's so many um, emotional healing processes and each one works. Each one does a different work on a person. So uh, do I understand you well, if, if I rephrase it like that, you work on the body, whatever block comes up, it's in the body and that's what you work at, work at and not at the memory, past memory part. Five bodies, okay? Physical body, intellectual body, emotional body, energetic body, and archetypal body. We have all five bodies and we work on all five at the same time. Whichever one needs the work right then. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.
Vera, would you put the five body? Thank you. And the in the PM process or processes, PM processes maybe. Well, it didn't have so much on it yet. Yeah, but so some of them don't have so much, and then if you get to go back there in, in a the few we, in a few in the future, there might be more <laughs> in a few weeks. <laughs> I just wanted to say something to Naomi. Are you still here? Did you say five bodies or five offers? Five bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Naomi, you were telling the story about that this friend thought that this was a cult because Clinton hasn't studied or, and then you wanted to study. <laughs> you haven't explained it. Okay, I have a double degree in economics and law and a master degree in international law from La Sorbonne in New York, Columbia in New York City. So I am qualified. Okay. She's, okay. <laughs> she's qualified. No, I wanted to say, um, it doesn't work to convince people to do transformation. Mm. It just doesn't work. So the best way that I found is you build your possibility team and you invite the people who you can feel have that kind of similar question and you do the experiment that turns you on, Naomi. You do the thing that turns you on, not because it's in the book, not because it's, you know, we've said it or something. You say, okay, I want to find out how I can create more intimacy with my boyfriend, I want to find out how I can have a culture to culture conversation. What do you guys say? And it, it, do the experiment you want to do, not for them, for you. Yeah. And, and then the rest of the time is, it's sort of about being yourself. It's about being yourself. And because you're going to keep growing and keep changing, then people are going to be, Hey, how can you do that? How, how can you be, how can, do you have exes in my life and I'm a freaking victim, you know, how, and you know how, and then, and that's the door, you know, when people can start noticing who you're becoming and, and they cannot do stuff that you do and they ask how, and you say, okay, do you want, you could check that out. There's a website. There's a website or there's, you know, oh, come to my possibility team or whatever. But that's the way, usually the talking about it, people have this block to it yeah so have to be elegant yeah and uh, can i say something you. about that too uh -huh. and, uh, when you talk about it people's minds become it's like uh, um the, the hunger that was in their being their being for what they really wanted if you talk about it there it's like their intellectual body becomes satiated but not actually the person so you you just kind of gave everything away instead of going with them to a you to an experiment or yeah or to share something with them i'd like thank you i'd like to then ask something because what happened was that i reached out to the non-violence communication community and i said i had found tools elsewhere that i was missing in nvc and whoever bad, was interested bad idea <laughs> why God. because nvc is a method it's a thing you're you're okay anyway sorry i interrupted you but, but anyway so like a lot of people got very excited because i'm not the only one who feels <laughs> that way because there's no distinction in feeling an emotion and they work a lot with emotion and i just felt like i got lost there and so she was one of the people and she really enjoyed me and blah 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 and the only thing i did was like do a process in which i shared the distinctions of the emotions but i made it feel in their own bodies and she was very excited, but then she looked on internet and she said she didn't find information about Clinton. And she said, I was so excited to share it for free. So it made her afraid <laughs> that it was a cult. I don't even know her, but um, yeah, but with what you said, I'm wondering because I have done it like a few times now and, and most people really enjoyed it, but maybe I could still change it and do experiments instead of like i want to share the feeling stuff because it helps me connect on common ground and i feel it's so exciting to learn about it so i am excited about sharing that yeah but naomi next time you just tell them that marshall rosenberg is one of my good buddies okay <laughs> okay yeah you yeah, keep going naomi just yeah, I'm gonna keep going. I, I'm, 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 I'm not sure even if I'm gonna reply. I'm, I'm gonna reply that I don't want to convince her of anything. I think I'm gonna. Yeah. Say. Okay. Okay. Enjoy Crete. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you guys, I don't want to go either, and I just have to see you. Thank you, Deborah.
Okay, Gabriel, thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Enjoy. I hope you're on vacation. I hope that you're passing around cards everywhere and spreading the love. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks for being here. That was great. I'll see you again. Thank Bye. Thank you so much. I have almost attended all your sessions of Right. <laughs> you're not the same person. I remember you from way back there. You're yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but like after the session four or five of us had a long conversation right ah, super. Super. Yeah. 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 and yeah. amazing it's amazing yeah thank you, thank thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Richard, Nikos, and Melissa thank you. <laughs> thank you thank you Vera for all the work thank you guys yeah. thank bye you bye bye thanks okay. Vera bye Nina <sighs> bye now. <laughs> like bye people. Relika is gonna stay until the end. <laughs> I was doing the experiment. Am I gonna be the last one or are they gonna stop it before? <laughs> I might. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Ciao.